skating has always been a popular uh, sport or activity in the black community as, as long as I can can remember. You all just go skating and go around in circles. Do you get dizzy? No. We were enjoying it, you know, because it, we can be ourselves. We can be who we are and enjoy doing what we tend to do. So it, it, it got to the point it grew. Initially, it started out with uh, four cities that were hosting these national events, and that was um, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, and St. Louis. Right. And we hosted the first national events, and then it started to grow, and it's grown into what we have now, you know. Yeah. In fact, there's like a skate club in almost every state now, I believe. Sometimes we leave our walking from our houses, we start walking, and by the time we got down the street, other people had joined in, and by the time we got to the skating ring, we'd be five, six, maybe 30, 40 people together, and we caught the bus there, we rode our bikes there, and sometimes we got on the bike trails at, <laughs> out in the park, and we skated there. Come follow me real quick. Look at these, look at the people around this table. I guarantee you, right now at this table, you have over, you talking about slavery, you got over, 600 years of <laughs> skating. Excellence, right here, add it all up. 600 years. Tradition. We are known and created the art form of legging, legging to the beat, like tap dancing, and being smooth on the flow, like you just gliding in there. That's what St. Louis is known for. When, we go, when you go elsewhere and roll with other cities, where they can look at you and say, well, he or she, it's definitely from St. Louis because look how smooth they roll. When I started sport skating, everybody was just skate this way, skate that way. It wasn't no crazy legging, it wasn't no shuffling, no gliding, all of that came later. When I've been skating in St. Louis for the last uh, God, 40 something years. I've been skating ever since I've been five years old. And through the many decades that I've been skating, I have learned to see the different styles in skating. St. Louis always been known being very intricate about the, their moves, their style, their charisma. It's all about smoothness. No matter what kind of tricks we do, we always put a, a smoothness to I'm, it. I'm proud to say that I know back when I was coming up, we brought skating to this city. Yep. We put St. Louis on the map, right? And, and everybody come here is one reason why they come here to get that is getting cold. You ain't been where we done been, man. I done been around. We done challenged other cities to the whole max. I done been there, man. I'm Ron Butts. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and I've been skating most of my life. You know, back in the 1940s and 50s, there were limited places for African Americans to roller skate, which resulted in churches, YMCA's, and parks to opening their doors for those who wanted to engage in this fun field activity. In the 1960s, there were several roller rinks operating, but with restrictions to African Americans, whether they were regulated to skating one night a week or refused entry without a membership. By the late 1970s, roller skating was booming. Rinks were plentiful and everyone was skating. Although society treated roller skating as another fad, urban areas across the country maintained a high level of love and respect for the sport. Today, there are over 250 urban roller skating clubs in the United States, with tens of thousands of rollers traveling city to city, sharing the culture and passion of rolling. Well, we didn't have any places to go but in the streets when I was small. We just lately here last, I guess, 30, 
30 years or so, 40 years ago, maybe, we had skating rinks so we could go to. White had skating rinks all, all the time. We started skating back in, it had to be around between 1968 and 1969 on 22nd and Broadway, King Skating Rink. Uh, there was no skating center uh, in East St. Louis. The one that uh, the skating center that I grew up in uh, or learned to skate in was uh, Starlight Skating Center. And uh, it had closed during the racial tension of the 60s. Uh, so we had no skating center. And for those of us that wanted to skate, we were relegated to uh, one night a week in uh, skating at the suburban rinks. Uh, was, uh, Soul Night was a night that was reserved for black people in a predominantly white community. When we originally opened the skating center in East St. Louis, that was 1970, Martin Luther King had just been assassinated several years prior to that. So the, the name of the skating center was the Martin Luther King Memorial Skating Center. Uh, I guess <clears throat> it was eight years later when we started to open up uh, other skating centers that we didn't want to commercialize the man's name. So we dropped the Martin Luther and we just became uh, Skate King. Hodges was all white skating. Men. We tried to get in Hodges. They said they didn't look like so, you know, we went back and we talked to the guy. We told the guy, hey, look here, man. You know, in the wintertime, because we were, in the wintertime, you know, everybody was breaking out. They going to play more. If they had a way, or they going down to St. Nick's, you know, or Aloha. And we went out there and talked to the guy. He was like, look, man, we can pack this skating ring every day because this is what we did. You know, we roller skated. I met the owners of that um, skating facility. Uh, two gentlemen, uh, Ben and Earl Hodges, people that had been in the business for, uh, uh, two white gentlemen that had been in the business for a number of years. And I came to talk with uh, Ben and Earl about buying their skating center uh, in Pine Line. Now, understand the history here. The Hodges brothers really were racist. Want, want anything to do with black folk, as a matter of fact, to prevent when Pine Line started to move, the demographics started to move from white to black, they um, did everything they possibly could to restrict black folk from coming into the skating center to the point that they uh, closed the center and made it a private club, so you had to have membership to uh, to come skating. Ben Hodges, um, no Earl Hodges, was uh, worked closely with me in the in the business. Um, he taught me a great deal about saving money as it relates to operating the, you know, the skating business in particular. And, uh, and I taught him a lot about uh, promoting. He had never saw the kinds of crowds that uh, we were able to generate uh, to, come, to come skating. But it moved from a working relationship over the, the months and years to uh, a, a valued friendship on uh, my part as well as on uh, Earl Hodges' part. Come May, they start announcing on radio Steinberg, opening day. Man, you go out there, it'd be a line coming from the gate all the way around to the parking lot. People just waiting to go to Steinberg. It was really a black thing, you know, everybody came together and, and it looked like, you know, don't where you came from. It didn't matter where you came from, how you looked or whatever, but when you came out to Stanbury, you, you became a skater. And that's how everybody looked at each other and they brought everybody together. But then as the years go, it looked like the um, the system changed and the Stanbury 
it, it was it, like after they took over new management, it just took a whole new different course. It looked like it just took the spirit of skating away, you know, because it was an outdoors rink and everybody enjoyed it. But but come to tell you, even though they, it, after the Stanford area, skating even took off and bloomed in many other areas, it just picked up and, you know, skating was going to live on regardless if the Stanford died out or not. First skating rink I remember going to was up on, uh, up on Finney. I used to go there and I went to 18th Street at the Catholic School at the gym. Well, I got my start of skating back in the middle 50s. And uh, it was something that I wanted to do. Me and my cousin used to skate on the sidewalks with the little clip-on skates. And so uh, we did that for a while until my uh, next door neighbor and her friend came outside going somewhere with some boot skates. And I asked her, where was she going? She said, well, we going to the skating rink. I said, skating rink, where is that at? And she said, well, it's down on Finney Avenue. And it's called the Palace Garden Skating Rink. St. Nick's was the first, that the first game we ever went to, St. Nick's, Stanberg, but uh, St. Nick's was the skating ring at the time. <laughs> they had the crystal, and, uh, but I always went to St. Nick's. We skated one day during the week after school, that was like Tuesdays or Wednesdays, and we skated Friday night, and we skated Sunday afternoon, and we skated Sunday night, and this was the skating rink at that time. Everybody from all around came here. They came from the Cochran, they came from uh, Pernago, they came from Cross Quarter, they came from Navarre, they came from out west, they came from out north, they came from everywhere. They came to St. Nicholas, and this was our skating rink. Uh, if you look here back here on the wall, uh, back in the day that sign that would light up and we would skate according to uh, what was played at the time. We do trio, we uh, do couples, we do boys only, we do girls only, we get all skate. We just skated. We skated, we had our fun here, and uh, there wasn't a better place to be. From the time we were little bitty boys, even up to now, uh, St. Nicholas has resumed our skating with an adult night, and you have a lot of members that skated here as children that still come back and skate here. Uh, and there's a lot of history that goes with it. I worked up under a great man, Matthew Foggy, for over 20 years. I always wanted to have a rink. Uh, he blessed me uh, with the opportunity to purchase the rink from him, which used to be well, Skate King number one in East St. Louis. Uh, he gave me an opportunity to purchase it from him. So my dream, all of my aspiration became true. And uh, since then, I have taken all of um, the tools, everything I learned from him, and I have put it into my perspective. I have made Skate City, and right here in East St. Louis, one of the premier you know, skating rink in the metropolitan uh, area. Everybody who's anybody Born and raised in St. Louis, or if you came to St. Louis, you knew about Saints. The Saints, how could we leave them out? Even That's though right. they're closed, <laughs> they're no longer in existence, but we had a lot of good times at Saints Road Rink as well. Saints was built by the city of Olivet, and, um, and then the energy crisis came in in the uh, late 70s. It was built as an ice hockey rink, and they shut it down you know, it went bankrupt. So uh, Peter Boo, my former partner, came in. He bought the building off the courthouse steps. It made the bonds good, you know, of the bond holders. So, and he had a 20-year ground lease on the property. And after the 20 years was up, the property went back to the city of Olivet. From 1986 to 1990. 1993, July 93, I worked at uh, St. Olivet Skating Center, you know, uh, in a uh, manager position, in a general manager capacity, and in a uh, very brief uh, ownership capacity. 
in July of 93 when it built the palace, uh, the Palace Family Entertainment Center in North County that we ran all the way through uh, December, December 07, June, December 31st, of, I'm sorry, of 05. I'm not sure of the number of black rink owners in the country today, but uh, during the the uh, the boom period of the 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 seventies and eighties, there were uh, like eighteen black rink operators, and I'm uh, I'm I'm pleased to say that I was. Uh, instrumental in organizing uh, those operators and creating uh, a uh, an organization, the Black Rink Operators uh, Association. Back in the seventies, we we called it roller disco. It was called disco skating. You know where we all danced on skates. Uh, we all had outfits that we kind of uh, dressed alike. Uh, we went around from uh, different cities displaying our talent which is from the Midwest, the East St. Louis, St. Louis area, uh, representing, winning contests, um, and things of that nature. Um, we have some of the best skaters right here in the metropolitan area. One of them is uh, the best, is Brian Morris, during the 70s area, all the way up to uh, around the 90s when he stopped skating as much. Uh, we also have some other skaters, Lisa Boyd. We also have Joe Hill. We have um, another guy named is Dwayne O, uh, Kevin uh, uh, Brown, and there's a lot of more other ones, uh, Bo Hawk. And I was recently told, I saw my brother skate, but my brother was named Gary Wise, and he was one of the best skaters uh, during his eras back in the 50s. I think Brian was the first person to, uh, and there were a number of other skaters, but I'm, I'm talking about Brian right now. Uh, he was the first skater to take um, his trucks, two of his trucks off of his skate, so he only skated with uh, two wheels uh, on each skate. Yeah, you know, when he skated, everybody paused. Like, hey, it's gonna be a show. It's showtime. Cameras, action. I agree. You know, because he come out, you know, he do a little dance, and all of a sudden, favorite rock come on, he go back, he take them wheels off, and uh, he just two wheels, he on the toe the rest of the night. He couple skate like that, he trio like that, whatever you want to do, he did it on the front two wheels. And it was, uh, and uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was sight see. My name is Brian Morris, and I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois, born and raised. Back in 79, 1980, I entered the contest in uh, Anaheim, California. I took number two in the United States. Uh, they had a $10,000 contest. From there, I came back here to St. Louis and uh, put on a lot of shows, had approximately 30 to 40 trophies, and skated pretty much all over the country. Uh, Chicago, Kansas City, New York, Anaheim, California, St. Paul, Minnesota, and pretty much took number one in all those places based on my gimmicks that I had. Yeah. I passed down some of the things that I learned That's from yelling at people, uh, skating on two wheels, Doing my flips. Uh, I had a partner back in the days named Greg Beck. We called him Disco Dog. I remember uh, incidents. Uh, I noticed Leo always skates on his two wheels right now. When I was uh, in a club called, uh, not a club, but a skate in St. Paul, Minnesota, the gentleman didn't want me to skate on my back two wheels because he was scared I was going to scratch his floor. And he made Mr. Matthew Foggy, who was my road manager at the time, put up $5,000 as insurance on his floor if I scratched the floor. Well, come to find out, he really just didn't want me to skate on my two wheels because he knew I was going to win the contest. So that was another way of trying to get me out. But when we come out with that $5,000 right off the top, he knew it was over with. So I went out there, performed, won the contest, got my $5,000, and then Mr. Foggy and Larry Wise. Crazy Wise. legs. Joe Hill. I'm going to give credit to Joe Hill and Dwayne Smith. I know they were the first ones I really saw. And when they, they you know, they had a squad of teachers that could follow them. And we all learn together, we all had our different ways of doing it, but we can all match up and do it the same way. So, you know, you're talking about another, you talking about another hundred years of excellence when you talk about Joe and Dwayne. Yeah, they, they were the first crazy legs. And I'm gonna add a mention to a female, Alice Davis. 
Alice was one of the first females, and they all did a show together, which made me kind of get inspired and want to start doing shows. And I think that following summer, I, I did, that was maybe my first show I've ever done, and ever since time. So, uh, yeah, they all, they, they invented the, the crazy legs, and it was unique. You had some wild people trying some wild, crazy stuff. <laughs> it was funny, everybody had their own style. But it is a basic way to do the crazy legs. Like they say, when you think of crazy lady, you think of Joe Hill. Joe took it, man, and he just took it to another level. When he had the crisscross and the the, leg, the backward leg drop, we had the double glide. Chess like Lil Kenny, Harpo, Big George, Hollywood, Tony, yeah. Dern. Yeah. Uh, man, I can just give you a, a plethora of names of guys you know who were just average skaters. And when y'all see this, I don't care if y'all get mad or not. You know when y'all used to just be rolling around the ring, y'all was just looking all ugly like y'all was getting down. Y'all wasn't doing that. We said, we said, man. We pulled a lot of y'all on over, man. Put y'all under our wing. Look at you now. But y'all, y'all legends y'all selves, man. Now nah, you legends. Now nah, y'all legends. And I, I'm glad you I, I remember where it come from. That's right. And I'm glad y'all was a part of my era, man. Because not exactly. only not only that did we get to skate together, man, but we became like Good lifelong friends, friends man. Right, right. And, right. and that's what's important. Friends. Yeah. And the one brother I think about when it when it comes to mind, Eddie. Uh, Dr. Brothers Blind, Eddie. Yeah, Blind. Eddie was able to see. I'll never forget that me, Eddie Hollywood, all of us went down on the riverfront that 4th of July. And, and that 4th of July holiday, and mm -hmm. Eddie got into an accident, car accident, mm -hmm. and man, you know, lost his vision. Yeah. Eddie came back to the skating rink undeterred, hooked up. Man, man, take me around, baby. Sometimes, man, I'm sorry if you ever watching this video, or, I mean, or listening to this video. I'm sorry about the wall I made you run into a few times with the music. <laughs> man, man, I had it on my mind. Yeah, we used to take him around. <laughs> but before you know it, he was doing it. Man, he was right back in the stuff. game, man. Yeah. One of the best skating cities in America. We got some guys that skate, flip, dip. And do it all, you know. They give up, they give up, have a lot of shows sometime up to the skating rink. And uh, guys really can spin and, and do all type of things, jumping over each other, you know what I mean? got me in the skating is I went out to Steinberg out in the park one Sunday. It was Labor Day weekend. And I was, and they had they was having a skate show. I saw uh Wayno and Joe uh, Kenny, Big George. I had hadn't met them yet. Kevin uh, Brown, he was out there that year. And uh we grew up together. Shoot. I skated all that winter. Kevin helped me that spring and summer. He saw I really wanted to get into it. We put the routine together. We was in the skate show the next year ourselves. Yeah, I used to like to turn, do a hand, a handstand, snap it down to a backward flip, roll back, do a mat kip up, and I would dive out and smile at you in the camera. My patented move is when I hit the split, I bring it up with my collar, and that's it. That's the basic Hollywood show. I call it the Hollywood show. I seen when when Glide and Shuffling and, and Crazy Lady was developed. It didn't, you know, so I didn't really have no inspiration skate. It was all like a big old learning process. Everybody was trying to come up with little stuff to do different than everybody else was doing, you know, and. It's like, people don't know, Playmore and Steinberg had two different crazy legs. A guy named Bobby Smith created a crazy leg 
gonna play. And he kind of had it where it said, he did like this, and then he brought it back, then he brought it back out like that. And where Joe Hill took him to where it was click, 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 click. Once I saw them just come up on two wheels, going zigzag, I decided to try it myself, and ever since then I've been doing it. They influenced me because I watched each individual, how they did it. And I just started doing it and came up with it. Mainly just doing it like Joe Hill instead of anybody else. But I got a taste of all of them in me, but Joe Hill is the only one that really got a hold of them. I tell people that this person here could probably skate better than I can walk. His name is Thomas Bowie. He's a legend here at Skate King. Another name that I have to call, if I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, let me pick five names. Thomas Bowie, a legend, the Skate King. Brian Morris, who was married on skates in 1979, is a legend at Skate King. And again, I'm talking about people, I have to look at how they skate. Just because you wiggle a little fast doesn't make you a good skater. Uh, Larry Wise, who is my cousin, who also is an operator now, who's been in the roller skating business for years, is a legend with, in roller skating. Uh, Johnny Dupree, who's deceased now, had a different style, but he was a legend. A name of a person that's no longer around the business, Deco Malley. He, and I say Deco Malley, we call him Dietrich because of his style. He brought a different style to skating. It wasn't your everyday typical run around the floor thing. We call it the O'Malley. He had a total different style. My style consists of old school, new school, ballet, African dancing, ballroom dancing. It, it traces back to the deepest roots of black entertainment when they wasn't allowed to do what they do today. The first thing I developed individually was a travel spin. And the travel spin was a move where I would pick up top flight speed and hit about 20 to 15, I mean 15 to 20 travel spins real fast. I had great control and I, and I always look for great space because that would always dazzle the crowd and, and I, I would always be able to feel it. But taking the travel spin and then picking up other stuff, I went from there uh, to doing backwards rolling splits. Uh, I also was an expert in uh, couple skating. I always liked couple skating, whether it was a male or female. I would always be able to pick off another person's body chemistry, and we would take it from there to another level. And uh, doing that, that made me one of the best skaters around, and word got out that T Thomas Boyd was a skater. But you know who I watched a lot of? And y'all know Johnny Hatch. Johnny Hatch was a big inspiration for me because he liked to dance. And when you mix that, that like it to dance and put it on skates. I've been skating for long as my little slip, huh? <laughs> In other words, I've been skating anywhere from 45 to 50 years, if you can believe that. As long as I've been dancing. But some of the stuff I do, Miss McGee, is just a thing of beauty. Uh, I tell you that. I don't say that, uh, you know, and arrogantly, but uh, I'm just blessed, you know, with creativity. I'm not actually a skater. But what I do, I apply a technique that I think is unique, uh, one that fits me perfectly. So I apply my dance style to my skates. I've never had a skating lesson in my life. And if you've seen the other people that actually do that thing. In fact, if you gave me some blues, I would do something for you. Are you listening? I have to say it's a lot of legends. But to, to tell you, you know, their names, you know, you know, I, I, I know one legend in particular, uh, Leo, Leo, he's cold. He's an older guy. He's influenced me so much, you know, with, uh, he's, he's like 70 something and he's still rolling out here, man. And uh, I, I get encouraged when I see it, you know. Uh, there's a lot of younger generation that's coming in, coming in with different styles that I recognize. But, you know, with the name thing with me, I don't I don't look at names. I don't, you know, I don't even, I just, everybody look at me, they don't know my name. They just know I'm smooth. My personal uh, favorite was, was 
Well, I actually had a, I had several of them who, I, who inspired me, and I developed all their styles, a little bit of each one of their styles, to form my style. Joe Hill, I take for instance, I grew up under him, as well as Lisa Boy, who I learned how to crazy leg from. I learned a lot from Duano, who has the tumbling aspects, and uh, Kevin Brown, who, known as Hollywood, who, you know, got the finesse and everything with his spin and he hit backwards flips as well, like, like Duano. You have Kenny, who, who also is, uh, has a variety of things that he do with his, his skating ability. You have Crazy Leg George, There was uh, just a, a, a um, I guess about eight or ten skaters that really separated themselves, and they were part of the Skate King skaters, performed at any number of venues, uh, on, uh, on television, uh, at the Cool Jazz Festival uh, below the, the Arch in St. Louis. Uh, so they, and they competed uh, nationally. I don't remember if uh, uh, what place they um, they won uh, at some of the uh, the national competitions, but they were always in the top three. Um, the um, some of the the stunts that were or or the tricks in skating that were performed were uh, flips that they were very acrobatic. They would uh, turn flips with uh, singularly and folk would just pick people up and throw them and they would flip and skate and any number of other um, unique skating uh, styles that were put forth. You know, you pick a little bit from everybody. You try to. That's coming up skating. You can't just you need to make your own style out of all of them. Make your own style. Everybody that I ever came up with, we never really challenged each other, but we all had different styles and that's what kept it real with them. What make me laugh is when people looking at me and they say, oh, Fred, that's his style. But people don't understand what I'm doing within one song. I, this, is, this is what is a challenge. When you can skate like somebody here and you say, okay, I'm about to imitate Lala. And imitate right. him to a T, not just imitate him. Then I'm saying, okay, I'm going to skate like Leo Daddy used to skate. Smooth as mm -hmm. calm and skater that, you know, be right in the midst of all kind of crazy stuff because we used to skate on Saturday mornings out of Saint, out of Saints with little kids, right. you know, look like kids <laughs> running around going the opposite way and all that stuff. Leo Daddy was so smooth, we get out of the way and stay on beat. It wouldn't it didn't even make no sense. So right. you just when you can skate like different people and and bring it all together, people yeah. look at St. Louis style in other cities and they just say, okay, St. Louis they got their one little style of skate. Mm -hmm. They skate to the beat and skate smooth. There's so many styles within that that people don't even understand what's going on. And you got to be a real roller to even understand what's going on. Let's go back for a second. Uh, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, skating was a way of getting uh, exercises or being cool, as guys say. Uh, 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 and ladies like guys to skate. <laughs> guys like ladies to skate. It was always some kind of a uh, togetherness that skating brought. I don't think that it's just skating for us. I think it's something that is enjoyment. You enjoy the, the camaraderie, the friendship when you're skating. Uh, you're going back three, three, four decades at a time. Right. And while we're skating, we remember, remember that time when so and so and so and so and we did trios. So it's a number of things. Not only that, but I also think that it's physically uh, Invigorating when when you you're not just you're not just skating you're getting exercise right. true, you know people true. don't grasp it's that concept therapy. but it's a place where you meet you meet and greet your old friends yeah. you know those people somebody uh, you always yeah. want on the skate you like, hey baby I've been waiting on you, you know what, come on <laughs> right that's well, let's roll skating is over we gonna roll some more right right <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but that that is true some people have, have found their mates up. Uh, Escape. True. Escape. Escape. Like Escape. Escape. Got married. And Escape. some people have gotten yeah. divorced. <laughs> <laughs> that divorce? <laughs> divorce. I thought it was divorce. No. <laughs> I guess they I'll got divorced. <laughs>
could die later. Okay. The relationship died oh, is what yeah. I'm saying. You can have a relationship right up. But it, that's the absolute truth. Uh, but you, you find right. friends for a lifetime at, yeah. at, at the skate ring. So I know that I have. So it's more than just skating. It is more, it's than, more than just a hobby. Yeah. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. It is a way of life. Right. To me, skating is like a family affair. That's how you meet people. And the people you meet are more friendly than your kinfolks, to tell the truth. And once you start going skating, and you see a lot more people from all over the city, and that sets a, 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 a stage for when you get older, like we're doing now through the 60s and 70s. You go skating, you saw people from the projects come out west. That was a big thing coming out west. Uh, uh, they come out to Steinberg, which I, uh, I was uh, skating out of Steinberg off a lot, at least twice a week. And that's when everybody in St. Louis was South St. Louis, East St. Louis, downtown, out west, out south. Everybody came to skate. Um, the females brought a, a lot of viability to the skating rinks because you were always going to be in a situation where some guy wanted to ask another female, you know, to do couple skate. Or you had those who uh, you were small enough and they would just kind of like throw you around the skating rink when you were doing trio skates. Uh, so, so it brought a lot of intensity to the skating rink um, and a lot of activity. As far as uh relationships at different ranks, you have a wide variety of relationships. You have uh, casual friends, you have people you don't like, you have people you admire, you have people that you try to emulate. Uh, you have uh, me for myself, my wife was chosen out of the rink, if you will. You know, uh, very few people come into your life like the people that you skate with. You have a rapport with them that's unparalleled anywhere. I mean, you see them on the street. You may have never spoken to them in your life, but you see them on the street, and automatically the rinks, the skating, certain sessions come up. You know, where did you skate at? People tend to uh, come together, get to know one another. Uh, maybe not personally, but maybe just for three hours each night. So when they see you on the street, they let I, I, I know you from. From, where do I know you from? Then you tell them, from the skating ring. And then they say, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, then they begin to relate to where you've been and where they've seen you at. And, and, and it builds up builds up relationship. It's like a school outside of school, a home outside of home. It's a whole lot in one. A lot of things at skating kept people together within themselves when other things couldn't do it. People just like a family down the skating ring. You know them for 20 years, but you never see them outside the skating ring. But if you see them 10 years, 20 years online, I know you. Did you used to skate? Right. <laughs> and as for me, that's where I met my ex-husband at. And he's I think the everybody just went skating. Everybody's skating was everybody's life. So everybody right. down the skating ring just went with each other. They break up with this person, go with that person the next month or whatever. Like a whole they dated whole inside whole the family. skating ring. They didn't leave to go find guys or girls or whatever outside the skating ring. They just dated inside the skating ring. That's how it was back then. I think. Generation, after generation, grandmother, grandfather roller skating, mother and father roller skating. Grandmother, grandfather met at the roller skating ring. Mother and father met at the roller skating ring. So, you know, when they just continued on, you know, down the pot line. As far as skating go, you know, like when you were back, when we were Joe and myself, we were coming up, man, like being the baddest two skaters in St. Louis. You know, you got all the, all the, uh, all the extras and everybody knowing you. You were one of the most popular dudes in the city. I ain't talking, I'm talking about in the city. I ain't talking about just like, you know, you just being known. You the baddest guy in the city, right? And, and of course, you know, you get to meet a lot of women. And, and as a matter of fact, like, I can speak for him, myself, and everybody who came up with me and beyond. Like, majority of the children who skate are from skating parents, guaranteeing them. And, like, it ain't, it ain't nobody in St. Louis. Nobody. Nobody that ain't somehow attached to somebody who skate mm -hmm. or know a skater or have been skating. Right. Nobody. That's true. Nobody. Do they think that the DJs of the day play the right type of music to elevate them to the next level? Do they? Your business depend, depended on that music. 
you know, I mean, that was the bread and butter, you know, and uh, if you had good DJs, you had good business. You had terrible DJs, you had terrible business, you know, and the audience is very, I mean, the uh, skaters are very, very sensitive to that. The key to any skating rink is two, is three keys. You gotta have a location, you gotta have your skates, number two. Got to have a DJ. If you don't have them, the only three elements that skating requires, somewhere to skate, your skates, and the disc jockey. If you lack in either of the three, you ain't doing nothing. You got them, the rest of the stuff gonna come. And, 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 the, and the thing that you're losing right now in skating today is the disc jockey. Actually, the DJ right. controls almost what happened on, on the, the floor. floor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. He does. He controls the whole. He or she? He or she. He or she. We gonna get your prop. No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> control the whole atmosphere to how that skating should go. Look here, ain't nothing no beautiful than to enjoy the music and how it feels. When it hits you, man, it gets you all the way from here, all the way up into the, to your heart, man. You just got to put on a demonstration and, 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 and the feel of music and the rhythm of it, man, is what really brings out the best in a person. If the DJ can't skate, he ain't gonna play no good music because he got, what he got, what he gonna play music skate over? He might can dance, but he can't skate. Right. He did. A lot of DJs now, we have, a club DJ. DJs we had back then were skater DJs. In order to know, in order to to know the music that a skater want to hear, you got to be a skater. And that's in any collaboration. You got to be a skater. I wouldn't say they wouldn't have to be a skater because to this day I still I can go around the rink, but crazy leg and skating backwards and really just flying around the rink with almost breaking my neck. Now I still probably would fall this day. But any smart DJ, if you skating, I mean DJing at a skating rink, the easiest way to understand the mentality of skaters is listen to what they tell you they want to hear. We used to skate to like. Uh, more bounce mouths, nucleus, <laughs> Ohio players, brick hops, oh, everything. Hey. Fast. Yeah. Fast yeah. around. We used to yeah. crazy day, we crazy day, we get into it, and we and we have attitude with it. You right. know, we just put it down and I mean we you know the, the music right now got me so lazy because the beat ah, per minute good the beat per minute is <laughs> it went from hundred and five down to ninety, down to eighty. <laughs> G Mo was like ninety one beats per minute. And they be skating like you playing in my head Luke song. So it's all about the the tempo and the sound of the song that you're playing. The difference between a skater and a rope. You know, they got all that old slow, you know, jerk. Roller is a roller can skate off of Planet Rock, this is well off of Snoop Dogg and Dog, and he wrote. And that, believe me, there is a difference. If you you look at a person came up with my generation skating and the person that skates today, two different styles, two different styles. And if you was to put a planet rock or that beat, like, they'd get off the floor because they wouldn't know how to handle it. They wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't even know how to skate that fast to even keep it up with it, you know? What I've learned from the skaters that have talked to me is that you have to skate to anything in order for you to learn more about skating. If it's a certain thing that you want to learn, you can't wait to a certain type of music because what you may hear in St. Louis, you may not hear when you go to Cincinnati. What you hear in Cincinnati, you may not hear when you go to East St. Louis. What you hear in East St. Louis, you may not hear when you go to Kansas City. So you have to have an open mind and you shouldn't care what music is being played, whether it's to your liking or not. The music we had back then it gave us so much energy where we stayed on the floor and that's when we got all the dust in our hair. Don't you remember all that right. dust was in our hair? And we yeah, stayed on the floor. High and that's where it was. And our DJs just was so good. They just kept us on the floor and 15-minute workouts and all that on the floor. Yeah. Whenever I get a disc jockey five, I used to walk out and hit his hand. Get him five every night. Bam! My dog. Yeah, when the last time you shook a disc jockey hand at the skate man? Mm -hmm. When the last time you wanted to smack the out of Let me ask you that. Every time. Okay then. <laughs> Dance music is escape music, but 
but everybody don't know that. Only certain DJs get it and understand it. You know, the ones that do, oh, they, they get the session just pumped and going, and, and, and it's a beautiful thing. The ones that don't, people sit down, they start taking their skates so. off. DJs, now it's different from DJs back then. That's a big difference. And now a lot of DJs that was playing records back then come to spin now. They want to hear a lot of music that they playing now. But you got to mix it in there together. That's right. You know, to get a variety. That's right. You know, and then the trends of the floor going to change. Cause people today from the old school don't want to hear all that, but they playing now, you know. I started spinning like in the 70s, but in the 80s, I went to the Saints. I was spinning at the roller skate parties and uh, took most of them over. Cause I was the major DJ out there and spinning the Saints, you know. And you couldn't really have a party unless I was spinning. Okay, cause I, I gave people what they want. You know, I was up to date on all the records. As soon as the record hit the market, I had it. They wasn't hardly playing on the radio and I had it. And that's what the people like. The beat is what you really want to skate to. If you're real true skaters out there, I want everybody to know it's the beat that you skate to. It's not the song. It's not some favorite song you've been listening to the radio all day or whatever. You need to get really into the beat. If you get really into the beat, then you'll find your soul into roller skating. The music is uh, it's the foundation. You don't have uh, certain beats make you do certain moves, make your creativity expand. If you keep hearing the same beat over and over and over, your brain cells become dead to your mo to moves. You can't keep creating. You have new music, new beats, you have new moves. It goes hand in hand. They had Rob Teller, bless his soul, uh, Rob in the past. Uh, man, Cole gets jockey back in the day at Steinberg. Yeah. They had Pierre, Pierre from down in St. Nick's. Whoa, right. man, that brother can cook, man. Right. G Wid, mm -hmm. shit, G Wid. <laughs> that, that's just what I say, G Wid. <laughs> that bitch, that bitch can blow. Anytime you can do something to express yourself, to release tension or whatever in your life, then it's past a hobby. It's one thing about skating. You have to be dedicated to it. You have to uh, put time in. You have some people that come out and they want to skate and learn how to skate in, uh, say, two or three months. It takes years. I mean, you have muscles that you probably haven't used in years and years, and you're kind of waking them up. Skating is fun. It's good exercise, good for the heart. Uh, I enjoy it, and uh, you know, if you get involved in skating, at least try to make it out once, or twice a week, just to you know, get out there and open them lungs up. Back in the day when we would go to the rink, it was all about exercise. It was all about uh, the guys would skate with you, and they picked the the women that they knew could roll fast and. That would do trios with where they just kind of throwing you across the rink. You wasn't overweight, you wasn't underweight, uh, but you stayed in shape. And so afterwards, after you left the rink, you would walk to the rink, go skate and sweat for three or four hours, and walk back home from the rink. They don't do that nowadays. And you know what, like Big Time, Big George, mm -hmm. all all them big guys. When I say big, we talking like two. 250 and better. It goes to show you it doesn't matter what size you are if you willing to learn. We didn't show people how to skate 250, 300 something pounds. And they get out. And they roll. And they roll. They don't skate, they roll. Yeah. You know what makes skating more popular than anything and people don't never believe this? Skating wings were on the bus line. Always on the bus line. Everywhere you went to St. Nick's, you catch the bus. You went to Playboy, you catch the bus. You went to Stanford, you catch the bus. You went to Skate King, you catch the bus. You know, so if you didn't have a ride, you sh it didn't stop you from rubber skating. Back at that time, we was doing things. We rolled into the skate rink and stole them cars, stole them bicycles, hitchhike. People would just see us walk and pick us up and bring a skating, man. I mean, I, what, by any means necessary. I had walked. That's how we you got the Hoyman tracks to East St. Louis skate. Yeah. to go skate. 
And that's before the grid. Left early, got over there at 8 o'clock, and found out they didn't open to 12. <laughs> Skate King on uh, 22nd and Broadway, the floors used to sweat after it rained, so that was always a really kind of hard thing to do. You wanted to go skating with you. If you had a bad downpour, it's almost like, oh, we're going to have a lot of dirt. We're going to be sliding. You know, this is not a good day to go skating. But you probably went anyway and just stood up there to talk and, 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 and have fun. And, talk to people and things like that. I remember a lot of times we went out to Steinberg, it rained that morning. We had to wait till they squeezed the floor. And people waited. As long as they had it done, the skating started at nine. As long as they had it done by 10, 10, 15, we still skated that hour or two. Then we had to put the cones here and let it dry, move the cones here and let it dry, move the cones back till we got a full ring. Then it's time to go, hello. I remember jumping out third floor Wednesday. <laughs> Mom said, you can't go skating, I had to go. And uh, not just to defy my mom, but it was a blessing that I was sneaking out to do something positive and not just being in the street. So I thank the Lord bless me for it paid off then, but I don't know where it was, but I, I couldn't stop me from going. I had to go. I had to climb out my second story window because my mama told me I couldn't go skate. And I snuck down the side of the window with two sheets tied up and stole her car. I you said they, that's the worst thing I ever done to get skate. We didn't even have people get married on skates. Yeah, you know, married on skates. They had funerals on skates, man. You know, these these were the people who were dead skating and down skating, man. Yeah, we had visited funeral homes with our skates yeah. in honor of this person because that's what they done. That's what they really love to do, and we respected that. You know, like we we just play old jams like double dutch bus, uh, rock skate roll bounce. You know, some moving and grooving. You know. Uh, put the record on and, and the folks hit the floor. They get to jam real fast. They're moving so fast that the, the lights, they had ball lights and the lights got to moving in the ceiling. And you know, when the balls get to moving, you know it's wall crashing time. So, uh, you know, they, they hit the floor and they get to going around real fast. And all of a sudden, you know, people done crashed into the wall by the sink sign and stuff. You know, had to cut the record off, cut the lights on, you know. What I noticed lately, over the few years now, is a lot of St. Louis skaters are adopting other cities' style. They're thinking about the St. Louis and doing their style. And St. Louis style is fading more and more and more away. And when you look out there at the rink, you see Chicago, you see Louisville, you know, Indianapolis, Memphis, you don't see barely see St. Louis anymore. You don't see any legging, no hardcore legging, no smooth, slow glide. That's St. Louis. That's what I fell in love with. When you go to Chicago, everybody's going to been skating like that in Chicago, the way they've been skating for years. Uh, if you go to Detroit, they still skate the same way. But it seems like in St. Louis, you know, it has changed again, you know, from disco skating to just sophisticated skater where most folks don't want to get out and have the fun that skating really possess. You know, everybody wants to skate. And kind of, they say, when I say sophisticated, you know, in the cool way, you know, they ain't trying to break the sweat. They ain't trying to uh, uh, exert themselves. And back then, when you talk about the disco skating, I mean, it didn't matter if you sweat. You know, you came to the skating rink to sweat to get your skate on and get your roll on. So that's what I mean by, you know, the, the difference in the disco skating then and the sophisticated skating now. You know, it's more or less laid back skating uh, at this point. You know, people come out, you know, uh, uh, they, they dress it more sophisticated. Back then, you didn't have to dress sophisticated. You just put on your pair of jeans and a T-shirt and you came out and you skated. Are we going to be in the business for uh, a number of years? Yes. Are we going to be expanding uh, the uh, existing facility that we're operating uh, in Pine Line? Yes. Um, the, uh, will we, do we have new and exciting uh, programs scheduled for the, uh, the, the skaters of St. Louis? Yes. Um, we'll Will roller skating continue to thrive and do well uh, in the, the coming years? If we have anything to do with it, yes, yes, yes. Skating is my life. If 
but if I lose, but lose anything, maybe you can't stay no more. My life is over. It's not just going around in circles, or it wasn't about just dressing up to show off your, you know, clothes. It was just, you know, it was, you know, the style of the skating. We had skating. to match our socks and the shoes and the earrings and the belts and the bracelets and all that. And we get dressed up and you find me say, oh, where y'all going? Skating? Oh, wow, y'all just going around <laughs> in circles. What you getting so dressed up for? Everybody used to come together, one man, and we got out there. It was so special because we came and we skated. And skating was us, and there was nothing else involved but just style and, and, and fellowship and then having fun with everybody back then. It brought everybody together. That was so special to me about skating. Despite wherever, wherever you might be, if you come from St. Louis and you ask anybody, say, can you roll? He's going to look at you and smile and say, where the ring get? <laughs>